I'm Linda Prezioso, nurse practitioner at Family Medical Center. This is Here's to Your Good Health. We are going to talk about the common cold tonight. You know, there's so much um, stuff going on about cold and, and COVID and this and that and what is it and do I have COVID and what and it's just it's so confusing and, and I, I, I don't know that I'm going to help you figure it out but I did want to talk about the common cold because you know um, we get them there's over 200 viruses that cause a common cold so you know you might have one and you can develop an immunity to that one but then there's 199 left to go average person has one to two colds a year um I, i've seen that in my practice people come and say this happens to me every march or this happens once a year um and so we're just going to talk about some things and and just discuss it a little bit. Um, I'm live tonight, sorry, got an itchy nose. Somebody must be talking about me. Um, and so my number is 407-1111. Uh, this program, at the very end of it, um, I taped a very interesting young lady who had had a heart transplant, or well, has had one. And she works here on this campus, on Wesleyan campus at the Dunn Center. And I thought her story was fascinating. And I think I've told you all that I am part of a, a networking group for women, professional women. And we are putting on a, a tea at the Smith's Pavilion, the 29th of this month from two to four. The name of the tea is Hearts, Hats, and High Tea. Um, and it's a fundraiser for the American Heart Association. So I thought it would be very interesting to have her talk about her experience and what she went through. So the last segment of the show tonight is going to be, it's a pre-taped um, segment that I taped last week with her. She cannot be at the tea because she'll be out of town for a wedding so I, I thought it was a really interesting story and I wanted to share that with people so we're going to share that tonight as well but I'll be here for the first about 35 or 40 minutes so um, the common cold you know when you when you catch a cold your immune system automatically jumps into action its job is to fight infection and the telltale signs of a cold, you know, runny nose, cough, um, they're not from the virus itself. Those are symptoms that happen because of the things that are happening in your body as you res your body responds to the virus. As you start feeling better, your, vi your immune system is still working. Its next job is to get your body ready to fight off a virus in the future. The job is harder than that, than the first because many different viruses, as I just said, can cause colds. So your body learns how to fight off the cold you just have, but there are others out there that can still make you sick. So what can we do, you know, you're gonna, we're gonna talk about how your immune system cuts, um, fights the cold, and then what you can do to prevent getting sick. So the common call, cold is also called a URI, upper respiratory infection, and it's not caused by a single virus. More than likely, it's several viruses that cause your problem. And um, the most common virus responsible is called the rhinovirus. Rhino means nose. The common culprits are respiratory syncytical virus, human parainfluenza virus, adenovirus, common human coronavirus and human metopneumonia virus. We knew about all those things. So, and those are just, you know, five or six that I rattled off out of the 200 that can cause it. And of course now we have the coronavirus that can cause, sometimes it's very simple like cold and common cold symptoms for people and sometimes we're still getting very ill and even passing away from this daggone coronavirus. So how do you catch a cold? Normally it's when you come in contact with an infected person. They cough, they cough or sneeze on you. Um, or they can cough and sneeze on a surface and you might, you know, 
pick up a glass and touch the table and there's a virus on it. And then you inadvertently may touch your eyes or your mouth. Um, some cold viruses can be spread through fecal matter, that's your poop, if an infected person doesn't wash their hands after using the bathroom. Now that's just gross, isn't it? Um, and mo most, kid, most people get a couple colds a year. And regardless of what caused your cold, what virus caused it, there's the, the symptoms are pretty much all the same. Congestion, runny nose, coughing, sneezing, sore throat, headache, muscle aches, fatigue, and occasionally a fever. So the average cold lasts about 10 days. It's no, worth noting, however, that it takes, that how long it takes you to recover and the exact course of your cold depends upon several factors. The health of your immune system, the cold virus that you were infected with, and how you care for yourself while you're sick. The incubation period is the amount of time when you are infected with the virus until your first symptoms appear. With most cold viruses and rhinovirus in particular, this period of time can be quite short. When symptoms appear, depends upon the part of the specific virus causing your cold. Rhinoviruses can produce symptoms for 12 to 72 hours after infection, but commonly do so in 24 to 48 hours. Some other viruses can take up to five, five and a half days to, um, to, to get the infection going. Then there's stage one, so there's an incubation period, then there's stage one, and that lasts for approximately the first one to three days of your cold. The first symptom to appear after the incubation period is usually irritation of the throat, such as a scratchy throat. Um, you, you, feel, you can feel that a sensation in the back of your throat. Um, you may feel more tired than usual. Another early symptom is sneezing. Um, during that first stage of cold, you might also experience a watery nasal discharge. As soon as symptoms appear, you are contagious and capable of spreading the virus to others around you. Depending upon which virus is responsible, you may get progressively worse or you may peak at the end of stage one or at the beginning of stage two. Um, research indicates that zinc supplements, especially if started within the first 24 hours of symptom onset, may reduce the severity of symptoms and decrease the length of time you are sick. Um, zinc lozenges are an option as well as just taking a, a zinc supplement. It's also a good idea to increase your fluids as soon as you notice symptoms and then implement the measures such as staying home, good hygiene to prevent spreading your illness to others. Stage two com comprises days four through seven of your cold. Um, most, most colds peak at, uh, during stage two. It's not uncommon for your throat to, your sore throat to disappear after it starts. You may develop a fever, you may not. Your nasal discharge may become thicker, it may change colors. If not controlled, severe congestion can lead to complications of the common cold such as a middle ear infection, sinus infection, pneumonia. Um, use over-the-counter medicines such as acetaminophen, Tylenol for the fever. Um, but you should always call your doctor if you're running a temp greater than 101. Um, you should contact a healthcare professional if you suspect an ear infection or a sinus infection. Since these can be secondary bacterial infec infections that require an antibiotic. Decongestants, cold remedies may be useful, um, but you know, it may or may not help. Using humidifier in your bedroom can help. Um, you can still pass your cold virus on to others at stage two um, and for as long as you're experiencing symptoms. You really need to avoid spreading the illness, stay at home, cover your mouth when you cough and sneeze and wash your hands frequently. What have we been saying for the last two years with this pandemic? That's what you need to do, what we all need to do. 
All right, so stage three. This is from the seventh day of your cold until the resolution of your symptoms. You may feel back to normal by day seven, but some symptoms may last as long as three weeks, especially with this coronavirus. The, the coughs are lingering and they might last. I've had a couple patients have had them two and three months, getting better all the time, but they're still coughing. Um, and so that's kind of a, a summary of your cold. And um, so what happens when you, when you catch a cold? What happens to your body? So there, you know, they, the viruses attach themselves to the cells inside your nose, in your nasal passages, and in your sinuses. After they get inside, the cells start to make copies of themselves. This is called a replication. It takes about two days for the cells to trigger your immune system to start fighting. They do this by releasing a chemical messenger called a cytokine and your body responds to the cytokines and that's where the symptoms of the cold are. It's the response of the body to the virus that's already in you. Um, your vessels will get bigger, they dilate to allow infection fighting white blood cells to get to where the virus is. When the vessels swell, it can make your nose and airway feel stuffy or achy. So that's why you've got a stuffy nose, because your body is working to send your white blood cells, which is your immune system defense, to the place where the virus is, has landed and is replicating itself. Um, and then the white blood cells themselves release a chemical to fight off the, the um, cold. And these spaces, can, these chemicals cause spaces to get inflamed, fluid can collect in them, causing a runny nose and a cough. Cold viruses do not damage cells the way that influenza viruses, flu viruses do. You've, you've, the symptoms you feel when you have a cold happen because your body is fighting so hard, not because the virus is hurting your cells. When your immune system fights harder than it needs to be, it's called overreaction. So that's kind of what happens in your body when you've got a, um, a cold going on and your body's response. Um, so some of the other viruses that cause problems are the RSV, the respiratory syncytial, syncytial I don't know, that's not right, virus. This is a very contagious virus, but most people are genuinely healthy and do not get sick, excuse me, somebody's talking about me, from RSV. But babies and older adults and any person with a weak immune system can get really sick if they catch RSV. And I've, I know you've heard of that with babies in the hospital. Parainfluenza viruses, although it's, the name sounds like it, these viruses are not the same as the ones that, are caused, that cause the flu. I don't know why they call it that if it doesn't, but what do I know? Coronavirus, most people are familiar with this type of virus because one of them, the SARS-CoV-2, or causes COVID-19. Another respiratory illness, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, or MERS, M-E-R-S, is also called by, caused by a coronavirus. There are many other cor uh, coronaviruses that are commonly that commonly cause um, mild colds, and most people will catch at least one coronavirus in their lifetime. Then there's a metanumovirus, and that this type of virus causes infections in the upper and lower respiratory tract. So up here, this is upper, down here, your lungs is the lower part of the respiratory tract. Um, these symptoms are usually mild. They're, more, they're most active in the winter and early spring, so that's why we're seeing a lot of colds now. We've seen them through the winter. And um, now there's a lot of um, allergy symptoms too, and sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between them. Or you've got allergies going on and you get a cold. So it can get to be 
kind of how do I treat it, where do I go, what do I do? Um, do you think, will there ever be a, a vaccine for colds? I don't know. The flu vaccines and the COVID-19 vaccines both work on viruses, um, but you know, there are more than 200 viruses and so we would have to make vaccines for every single one. Can you imagine having to have 200 shots? Some people don't even want to take the one coronavirus immunization. So um, I don't know that that would go over too well. Be interesting to see anyway. Um, let's see here. Let's see. We talked about the common cold causes. I always duplicate and print off much too much. Let's talk about some treatment for the cold. Uh, well, let, let's hang on, let's go back just a minute. We talked about the viruses, the different ones. So the complications of the cold, you know, most colds will run their, their course and you don't need to do anything. I realize people don't want to be sick for six to 10 days, but you know, viruses, there's not a whole lot we can do. You just have to live through it. Antibiotics will not work on a virus. Antivirals work on a virus. But as I just said, there's over 200 viruses that can make us sick. So trying to find the right antiviral is not always going to be possible either. Sometimes you just have to go through the symptoms and let your body do its job. Your body will heal itself, but you know, we live in a microwave society. We want everything right now. We can drive through McDonald's and get a burger like that. We can drive through and get a cup of coffee like that. We don't have to wait for anything. We can take pictures on our phone and see them instantaneously. But you know, God made our bodies to be like slow cookers, and it just takes time. So we get impatient. I can't tell you how many patients call me and say to me, you gave me an antibiotic two days ago and I'm still sick. Well, the antibiotic hasn't even gotten in your system good yet, you know. Or I took Tylenol and my fever came back in four hours. Yeah, well, it's going to do that for a few days until your body works up to getting rid of that fever. So some of the complications of the cold our ear infections, which we have said. Sinusitis, you know, you've got your sinus cavities around here, right here in the middle of your nose, and those can get um, opened up and they, they're, they're full and they, it's painful. Um, that, it, usually sinuses will go away. I mean, well, sinusitis can happen after the cold just will not cure, will not go away. Asthma can be triggered by a simple cold. Chest infections can lead to pneumonia or bronchitis, and symptoms of that are a lingering cough, shortness of breath, and coughing up mucus. Strep throat is an infection of the throat, and, but I, I tell you, I've seen a lot of throats that are sore for up to three days, and then they go away. It's just part of the whole process. So we can treat ourselves with um, pain relievers, decongestant, cough syrup. Most all of that is over the counter. Um, decongestant nasal sprays such as Afrin, Sinex, Nasacort can help clear the, nose, the nasal cavity. Something called um, a neti pot. It, it, it has a little cup in it and it's got um, some saline that you squirt up on each nostril and then hold the cup here and the saline will pull all that junk out of your nose. Another good thing to do is stand under a hot shower and let the steam, you know, the heat open up those sinus cavities and let the steam work and, and help you to breathe better. There's really no uh, alternative medicine for a cold. Zinc, vitamin C can help boost the, the immune system, but um, there's really not much to do in, in that area. And you know, I'm all about alternative medicine, so um, that, that um, 
I wanted there to be something that I could be pushing, but I didn't see any of that. All right, I wanted to talk about some sinus, if I can find my paperwork on sinusitis. Just give me one minute here. Thought I had it all together, and I sure as heck don't. Oh, here we go. All right, so sinus infection. You know, after you've had a cold for five, six, seven, ten days, and it's not getting any better, you might have a sinus infection. And if it gets to that point, you probably will need an antibiotic. So, you know, there's a reason why when people come after they've been sick a day or two that we don't give them um, antibiotics because nine times out of ten it's viral. All you're going to do is build up resistance to an antibiotic and you need to let, like I said before, let your body do its work. All right, it's time for our first break. And so when we come back, we're going to talk about sinusitis and then we're going to talk about COVID-19, cold, allergies, and the flu and how to tell the difference between them. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more of Here's to Good Health. Hang on. At Downey's Hearing Care Associates, we are dedicated to taking care of every client by providing personal, high-quality hearing care services. My staff and I know hearing loss affects each person and their loved ones differently, so we give you the time and the care you need to ensure the hearing technology chosen fits your lifestyle. At Downey's Hearing Care, we also make custom ear molds and specialize in emergency hearing aid repairs. Down East Hearing Care Associates has two locations, one in Nightdale and one in Rocky Mount. We have hearing lives to save. Are you suffering from Medicare and Medicare supplement confusion? As you prepare to turn 65, I'm sure you're already bombarded by Medicare supplement mailings and phone calls. Don't be frustrated. Don't stay confused. Call Gus Tell Us. He can get you into the right plan that will work best for your needs. So don't wait. Call today and get the peace of mind that comes from knowing you're covered. Call me today, 252-937-6913. Hi, I'm Richard Goss, pharmacist and owner of Almond's Drug Store here in Rocky Mountain. I'm here today with my wife and two daughters. For over 75 years, Almond's Drug Store has been the pharmacy of choice for residents of Edgecombe and Nash County. Our family is proud to call Rocky Mountain home, and we are excited about the new services and products we are adding daily to the Almond's Drug Store's locations and also at our medical supply store. Come in and see us at Almond's Medical Supply. We're an extension of Almond's Drug Stores, your local hometown pharmacy. We're here to service all your needs, from wheelchairs to walkers to orthopedic supports, to compression hose, to hard-to-find wound care supplies. And you'll always get that hometown customer service. We want our patients to pay the best prices, get the best service available, and have a better pharmacy experience than they will get anywhere else. Our staff is committed to going above and beyond to meet our patients' needs. Whether it is working with your provider to get you the best medication at the best price, contacting your provider to get you the time to review each of your medications with you personally, or perhaps even helping you find an old-time remedy or other hard-to-find items, your Almond's Drug Store staff will work hard to meet your pharmacy needs. At Almond's, we will deliver your prescriptions for free. Both of our stores have drive through windows, we guarantee short wait times, and our pharmacists will come out to greet you personally and answer any questions you have. If you want to be met with a smiling face, or even want someone to greet you by name when you walk through the doors, we are the pharmacy for you. Call Owens Drugs today. 443-3138 or 446-0014. Howdy, welcome back. This is Here's to Your Good Health. My name is Linda Prezioso. I'm a nurse practitioner at Family Medical Center, and we have been talking about the common cold. We've been talking about things that can happen with the cold, how long a virus takes to get rid of it, how, how our body gets rid of it. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about a sinus infection. It's called sinusitis. 
So if your stuffy nose isn't getting better after six days or so, it's probably time to go to the doctor. And sinus infections are caused by fluid buildup in the air-filled pockets in the face, that's called your sinuses, which allows germs to grow. Virus cause most sinus infections, but bacteria can cause some of the infections. Um, Several factors increase your risk for a sinus infection. Previous cold, seasonal allergies, smoking and exposure to secondhand smoke, structural problems within the sinus. You could have nasal polyps. If you have chronic sinusitis, a lot of times you've got polyps in your nose that have to be removed. Um, and having a weak immune system, whether you've been sick, um, you're on some kind of medicine or drugs that cause a weakening in your immune system. So the symptoms are runny nose, stuffy nose, facial pain or pressure, headache, mucus dripping down the back of your throat called post-nasal drip, sore throat, cough, and bad breath. So, you know, if you think you have a sinus infection, then it's time that you go and, and see the doctor. So the treatment you know, it will be determined by the doctor examining you and, and seeing what your problems are. Um, antibiotics are not needed, excuse me, for many sinus infections. Don't laugh, Jill. I know you're watching. You're laughing at me. Um, most sinus infections usually get better on their own without antibiotics. Um, when antibiotics aren't needed, they're not going to help you, and their side effects can cause some harm. Um, side effects range from minor issues like a rash to serious health problems like um, a, a resistant um, infection called C. diff infection which causes diarrhea, can cause severe damage to your colon and even death. So, you're, you know, watchful waiting. What is watchful waiting? We don't want to watch. We don't want to wait. We want to take a pill and get better. I get it. I feel the same way. But watchful waiting, your, doc, your child's doctor or your doctor may suggest uh, watching and waiting to see if your child needs the antibiotics. This gives the immune system time to fight off that infection. Um, if after a couple, three days of rest, excess, you know, extra fluid, sinus, maybe um, cough, uh, you know, over-the-counter cough medicine or decongestant, then your doctor might want to write you a prescription. Um, but, you know, it, just because you've got a cold or just because you've got green nasal discharge does not mean you have to have an antibiotic. Um, some other ways I talked to you about, you know, standing in the shower and letting the warm water pile on your face. Talked to you about the neti pot, which is the little cup and you squeeze the nasal saline up in your nose and that pulls the stuff down. Warm compress over the nose and forehead can help relieve the sinus pressure. Uh, decongestant helps. Um, and there's always over-the-counter medicines that you can take. And always be, feel free to ask your pharmacist, you know. People think the doctor knows it all, but really, Pharmacists are the gurus when it comes to drugs. That's their thing. That's what they went to school for all those years What was drugs, how they work, how they interact, how they mix together. Is it going to be dangerous if they mix? Um, what are the compounds of it? What is in it? Those are the things that a, a, um, a pharmacist knows. And I would hope that they would all be willing to talk to you. I do know that pharmacists are terribly busy and um, it's hard to break away from the counter to talk to people, but it's really important that you can get that information from your pharmacist. All right, chronic sinusitis, and that's when it, you have sinus for over three months in spite of treatment, um, and so I said that nasal polyps is a possibility of a cause for the chronic sinusitis. Deviated nasal septum, you know, that's the septum is this little thing in the middle of your ear, I mean your nose. 
Um, that's the wall between the nostrils, and that can be crooked. That can block sinus passages and make the sy symptoms of sinusitis worse. Um, then you've got some medical conditions like cystic fibrosis, HIV, and other immune system related immune system related diseases, that's a mouthful, that can lead to nasal blockage. And then respiratory infections, allergies and inflammation that occurs with allergies can block your sinuses. And so, you know, if you've got chronic sinusitis, then it's time to go to a specialist, ear, nose and throat doctor. And he or she will look in there and find, you know, if they've got polyps, they're going to remove them. If your septum is deviated, they're going to fix it. Um, so those are some things about chronic sinusitis. I never even knew there was chronic sinusitis until I became a nurse practitioner. But I learn something new every day, and that's one of the reasons why I love my job, because I can learn something new every day. So. We're going to just highlight a little bit of the um, COVID, the coronavirus, and um, you know, it's a very contagious virus. It causes infection in your respiratory system, and um, it can really wreak havoc with lungs, and it can last for a long, long time. Um, there's something called long haulers that um, people had had the virus e even two years now and they're still fatigue and they're still sim they're still symptomatic with a lot of the the problem shortness of breath and that kind of thing and so it you know this COVID is no joke that's for sure I don't think anybody will fight me on that um, you know both COVID and and common cold they're both started by viruses. Um, COVID is caused by the SARS virus, while the common cold is the rhinovirus. And so signs or symptoms, cough. With COVID, it's usually dry, and you normally will have a cough with a cold. Muscle aches with COVID, usually cold sometimes. Tiredness, usually, there's a lot of fatigue associated with COVID and the cold sometimes. Sneezing, you don't, you rarely sneeze with COVID, but you do with a cold. Sore throat, both, both COVID and the common cold have um, sore throat. Runny or stuffy nose, both COVID and the common cold have that. Fever, usually with COVID, sometimes with a cold. Diarrhea, sometimes with COVID, never with a cold. Nausea or vomiting, sometimes with COVID, never with a cold. New loss of taste or smell um, happens pretty frequently with COVID. However, it can happen with a cold as well. Um, COVID symptoms generally appear two to 14 days after exposure. Symptoms of a cold usually appear one to three days after exposure. There's no cure for the common cold. We know that. Treatment is pain medicine over the counter like um, Tylenol, over the counter cold remedies, decongestants. Um, the cold is usually harmless. Most people recover from a cold in three to uh, 10 days. Some colds can last two to three weeks. Um, seasonal allergies are not caused by a virus. Seasonal allergies are immune system responses triggered by exposure to allergens, such as seasonal tree or grass pollens or heavy pine pollen as we experience in this part of the country. COVID-19 and seasonal allergies have many of the same signs and differences. I mean, same signs and symptoms, but there are some differences. So um, COVID, you normally have a dry cough, allergies, not, not sometimes. Fever, um, COVID-19, you're gonna get a fever. With allergies, no. Muscle aches, you're gonna get with COVID. With allergies, no. Tiredness, 
yes with COVID, sometimes with allergies, more than likely not. Itchy nose, e eyes, mouth, or inner ear, rarely or never with COVID and usually with allergies. Sneezing, um, rarely with COVID, usually with an allergy. Sore throat, usually with COVID, rarely with an allergy. Runny or stuffy nose, usually for both. Both COVID and an allergy will have a runny, stuffy nose. Pink eye or conjunctivitis can happen with both COVID and allergies. Nausea or vomiting can happen with COVID, never with allergies. Diarrhea may happen with COVID, never with allergies. And um, the loss of taste of smell, yes, with COVID and really not, very rarely with allergies. COVID-19 can cause shortness of breath or difficulty breathing. Seasonal allergies don't usually cause these symptoms unless you have a respiratory condition such as asthma that can be triggered by pollen exposure. Um, treatment of, over, of seasonal allergies is usually over the counter. You know, you've got your Zyrtec, Claritin, Allegra. Benadryl is the first line of uh, antihistamine. Um, Zyrtec and those are a second line. <sighs> um, nasal steroid sprays and decongestants are over the counter. Um, and of course, you avoid exposure as much as possible, but you cannot avoid the pine pollen in eastern North Carolina for about two weeks. I mean, you go outside and your car is covered in yellow. So, you know, you'd have to put some kind of a bubble over your face. Um, COVID and the flu are very, both very highly contagious and they're caused by viruses. Um, COVID is by the SARS virus, influenza is by influenza A or B viruses. Their symptoms are very similar. <clears throat> Their diseases cause no, um, symptoms or mild or severe symptoms when it's the flu, when it's the COVID. But because they're so similar, it's really hard to, dis, to determine which is which. And I've got a tickle in my throat because I've got allergies. Hang on one second. Sorry about that. Of course, you can test to um, see if you have a COVID test, I mean, you can have a COVID test or the flu test to see if you've got one of those. There is not a cold, there is not a um, test for a cold, and there's not a test for allergies. So the flu, you're going to have a cough probably, as you will with COVID. Muscle aches, you're going to have with both of them. Tiredness, you're going to have with both of them. Sore throat, you're going to have with both of them. Runny or stuffy nose, you're going to have with both of them. Fever, usually, with both of them. Nausea or vomiting, with both of them. Diarrhea, sometimes, with both of them. Shortness of breath or difficulty breathing can be both with flu and with COVID. And the only difference throughout all of these symptoms is the new loss of, of taste or smell. So um, we know that symptoms appear from day 2 to 14. We know that um, COVID can cause a lot of different complications than the flu. Blood clots, you can get blood clots in your lungs, multi symptom respiratory syndrome. And um, there's only one antiviral treatment for um, drug, there's only one antiviral drug that treats COVID and that it's really the only thing that we really have are the, um, the, the immunizations and we found out that even that is not helping a lot of times because people test positive after they've had both of the, you know, immunizations and both of the boosters. So I don't think it's necessarily not that you have to have it. 
I, I think it's better that you do, but you know, it, just because you get the immunizations does not mean that you aren't going to get it. So just to recap, um, the, the, we need to prevent as much as possible. Avoid close contact, keeping distance between yourself and others when you know they're sick, wearing a well-fitted mask if there's somebody you know that's sick, washing your hands often, covering your mouth or your, on your nose with, like this, you cough <coughs> into your elbow. Um, avoid touching eyes, nose, mouth, do heavy cleaning in all your daily surfaces. Get your annual flu vaccine. Stay away from seasonal allergy triggers. And, um, you know, it, it, that's the stuff that we've been talking about for the last two years. All right, it's time for our next break. And remember, then after this is coming the little um, clip about the girl that had the heart transplant. So I will see you all next week with more of Good Here's to Your Good Health. Good night. When faced with special care needs for elderly or disabled loved ones, families want compassionate, comforting care. That's Tender Touch Home Care Services' goal, providing the level of care we would expect for our own. With over 10 years of home care excellence, Tender Touch provides an array of services that keeps your loved one at home. From personal care, light housekeeping, errands, and meal preparation, to our private duty care program, which combines all of our home care offerings in one package. Tender Touch Home Care Services, where your needs are our concern. Today, some of the world's most advanced orthopedic techniques and technology are available right here in the Twin Counties at UNC Orthopedics at Nash. Our team of specialists offers a full range of orthopedic treatment, including spine services, hip, knee, and shoulder repair, as well as joint replacements and rehabilitation. So don't just live with the pain and immobility. The best care anywhere is close by. UNC Orthopedics at Nash. Hi, I'm Richard Goss, pharmacist and owner of Almond's Drug Store here in Rocky Mountain. Here today with my wife and two daughters. For over 75 years, Almond's Drug Store has been the pharmacy of choice for residents of Edgecombe and Nash County. Our family is proud to call Rocky Mount home, and we are excited about the new services and products we are adding daily at both of our Almond's Drug Store's locations and also at our medical supply store. Come in and see us at Almond's Medical Supply. We're an extension of Almond's Drug Store's, your local hometown pharmacy. We're here to service all your needs from wheelchairs to walkers to orthopedic supports, to compression hose, to hard to find wound care supplies and you'll always get that hometown customer service. We want our patients to pay the best prices, get the best service available, and have a better pharmacy experience than they will get anywhere else. Our staff is committed to going above and beyond to meet our patients' needs. Whether it is working with your provider to get you the best medication at the best price, contacting your provider to get you refills or a pre-authorization, or taking the time to review each of your medications with you personally, or perhaps even helping you find an old-time remedy or other hard-to-find items, your Almond's Drug Store staff will work hard to meet your pharmacy needs. At Almond's, we will deliver your prescriptions for free. Both of our stores have drive through windows, we guarantee short wait times, and our pharmacists will come out to greet you personally and answer any questions you have. If you want to be met with a smiling face, or even want someone to greet you by name when you walk through the doors, we are the pharmacy for you. Call Owens Drugs today. 443-3138 or 446-0014. I'm a nurse practitioner at Family Medical Center and a member of the Women's Professional Networking Group. And we, of course, as you know, because you're here at this tea today, are having um, a fundraiser for the American Heart Association. And I found a jewel to tell her story. Her name is Courtney Moss. She was born with something called cardiomyopathy, which is an enlargement of your heart. And she had a hole in her heart when she was born. And she's going to tell us her story. It's fascinating. I've listened to some of it. So I'm going to just turn it right over to Courtney. Good morning. Thank you so much for giving of your time. Good morning. For this. Thank you for having me. It's a great association. I'm sure you could say that with all the hospitalizations and things you've gone through. So yes. can you start at the beginning? I was born on, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was 
born on uh, August 28th of 1996. Um, as, as far as I know, my mom had a very healthy, you know, pregnancy, uh -huh. and mm -hmm. um, nothing was, you know, alarming, you know, throughout the whole uh, nine months. Um, I was full term, and um, but as soon as I was born, um, the the day of, they had to, uh, you know, take me away, and mm. and um, my facial features and uh, you know my size and everything uh, was alarming to them once I was out. Um, so. They did take me back and did all the testing, um, and uh, for those you know few days, um, everything was was okay. I passed you know all the regular mm -hmm. newborn tests and whatever. Um, they sent me home, and then uh, you know like a week or whatever later, I ended up in Greenville at uh, uh, what's the Vident, but it won't Vident then. I don't know yeah. what it was, whatever it was called. But their heart specialist. Yeah, there. their heart specialist in Greenville. Um, and that's when they sent me to UNC when they did the echocardiogram mm -hmm. and saw the hole in my heart and been at UNC ever since until my transplant. Wow. So you were just an itty bitty baby and they mm -hmm. took you right from your mom. I bet that was really hard on her and your dad too to yes. have a brand new baby and then have the baby be having some problems and be sick. So um, you went to Chapel Hill and you've had all of your work done there. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. they've, they've got a great yes, hospital and a great heart program. Yes, so what happened? How long were you at UNC then when you were first born? How long when did you when you were able to come back home? Well, I was in and out for the first, you know, three years of my life. Um, not with just heart, but you know, I have like low muscle tone and I have some you know, uh, I had hydrocephalus, which is water on the brain. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a collection of things. Right. Um, so much so that they didn't even know what I had for the longest time. They called oh, really? it, um, they ended up calling it Courtney syndrome. Uh, Courtney cause, syndrome. Yes. Because I had so much stuff going on, there uh -huh. was no one, one thing, one disorder mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. one diagnosis, you know, mm -hmm. that marked off all of my, you know, uh, conditions. Mm -hmm. um, so in 1998 or 99, uh, my aortic valve in my heart had uh, needed to be replaced. Uh -huh. And so they replaced it. And um, a few months later, I went into heart failure because my heart was just aggravated from being worked on. Right, right. Um, but at that time, I did recover. And I had follow ups um, with my cardiologist uh, for several years. Sure, of course. Um, and then when I was in, uh, and I did everything, you know, as a child, you know, I went to school, regular school, um, you know, just had my yearly appointments and, mm -hmm. and whatever. Um, I was in band in middle school, okay. um, played percussion. Mm -hmm. And um, it was in middle school and freshman year of high school is when I started getting really uh, fatigue and you know, we were starting to notice like, you know, something's not right. Right. And so it was either my sophomore or junior year, I needed my mitral valve replaced. And so they, um, you know, took me into surgery and we found out once I was in the surgery that they were able to just repair it instead of actually replacing it, which is great. Yes, yes. But since my heart was worked on again, uh -huh. it was aggravated again. So two months later, I went into heart failure. Again. And this oh is in gosh. 2013. Mm -hmm. And so um, in September of 2013 um, was when I was uh, in, at UNC for heart failure. And they put in a uh, LVAD, which is a left ventricular assist device. Right. And what that does mm -hmm. is it pumps the left side of my heart. My right side was fine. Mm -hmm. it, it was weak, but it was still working, mm -hmm. where my left side just gave out. Right. So they put me on the LVAD, and it pumped, you know, it was my left side of my heart. It, um, so my, I didn't have a pulse. I didn't have a heartbeat. So like oh when gosh. they used a stethoscope, stethoscope yeah, yeah. all you hear was a roaring. Wow. Like a, like a uh -huh. roaring sound. Uh -huh. um, and so they, uh, uh, and I had I had to have like an ID bracelet um, for if I did travel, which we never did because I was so sick. But if I did, you know, I would set off the metal detectors because of the oh, LVAD uh -huh. being a, a big chunk of metal, literally. Sure, like sure. it was surgically 
placed in, in my mm -hmm. heart. And I had a drive line that would come out. And I mean, it was literally, you know, like the size of that phone cord. Oh, wow. Maybe a little bit thicker coming out of my, my side, mm -hmm. you know, surgically. Mm -hmm. And hooked up to batteries. So I was hooked. So the batteries were on the outside. The batteries were on the outside, yes, ma'am. Oh wow. So the batteries, um, they and they were big, you know. And I, I you know, I'm a little person, you know. <laughs> I'm only four seven, but uh, but they they were big and and heavy for me. Uh huh. Having of to course. carry that. Of course. Twenty four seven. I slept with it. I. Oh. I would. You could not disconnect from it because right. it wouldn't work. Right. You know? Sure. Um. At night, and they had to be changed every four hours. Oh my gosh. And charged. Yes, they had to be changed and charged um, every four hours. Um, so at night, I would be plugged up to the wall. So <laughs> I'd be literally. I, I'm sure. There yeah, was there they was plugged what's it you called in. an AC adapter thing, uh -huh. and I was plugged into an outlet. Uh huh. So you didn't have to get up. Get up every every four hours because either you'd have to or your mom would have to. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. And the nights that we had storms. Mm hmm especially electric storms. Mm -hmm. that was My it. parents stayed up all night and yeah. watched to make sure yeah. that, that I wouldn't yeah. be electrocuted or we just didn't plug me up and they just changed my batteries every four right. hours. Right, right. You know, um, and my dad, he worked night shifts, so that was, he was okay with that. Yeah. My mom, on the other hand, needed her sleep, but um, she, uh, he, uh, he would do that and, mm -hmm. you know, change my batteries and make sure, you know, I wouldn't, you know, get hurt right. <laughs> during electric storms. Right, right, right. Um, so uh, anyway, so I waited. Um, they so they sent me home. I went mm -hmm. to school mm -hmm. with um, those batteries. With the batteries, yes. Changing I had a, every I had a four hours. Yes, ma'am. I had a backpack, um, you know, like a like a, a sling backpack mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that had the batteries um, in there for me. And um, I mean, I had to take it. I mean, you can't. I couldn't just leave it at my desk and go to right. the restroom and come right. back. Like, right. That was on me. Right, it was part seven. of you. Yes, yes. Um, so, uh, you know, my teachers, they all had to have, you know, training sure, before I could go course. back. Mm -hmm. I mean, a specialist from UNC came to Nashville, North Carolina to train my teachers on how to do this before I could mm -hmm. go to school. Wow. Um, so I was a, I went to early college. Mm -hmm. So I was a first year senior because it's five years. Right. Um, and they worked really well with me, mm -hmm. my, the high school and Nash community, because mm -hmm. I was enrolled there too. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and so then I was officially listed for the transplant uh, in March of 2014. Um, so I only waited for four months. So well, from, that's not very long, right? Really, I wouldn't well, think. Well, when you but yeah, you're when, so you, when you say it like that, yes, it doesn't well, sound well, long. Yes. No, but when you're wearing that thing, but and carrying it around, when it you're is wearing long, the isn't batteries, it? Yes, yes. ma'am. And you know, you see in the movies and, and and documentaries and stuff of you know transplants in the in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, they would have like pagers. You know, the, right. the patients would right. have pagers. Right. So you would know mm -hmm. when that pager went off, there was a heart. Right. Well, in 2013, they didn't have pagers, or 14, they didn't have pagers. We had cell phones. Oh. So every single time the phone rang. Oh, my gosh. We would think it would be for the heart. Oh, that must have been terrible. So that made the four months really long. Yes, Because yes. every single phone call. Oh, my gosh. You're thinking. We're thinking, oh, it's just a call, it's just a call. Right, right. So, except the one time that was the call that we weren't thinking it was the call, was because that morning of the day I got the call, that morning I had had a checkup mm -hmm. with my doctors, mm -hmm. my heart doctors, my mm -hmm. cardiologist. Mm -hmm. And they told me that they would call me that evening with my results. Oh, okay, so you were thinking that's what it was. So we see the call, we see that it's um, you know, from my cardiologist, mm -hmm. and we're like, oh, they're just gonna give us lab results. You know, They're just gonna tell us how right. the echo looked and everything. But oh no, they told us we have the heart, we gotta be there in three hours. Oh my gosh. Yes. And it's a good two hour drive, isn't it? Well, with my dad driving, no. <laughs> it was an hour and 15 minutes. Oh, okay. And I'm telling you, we were rolling. I'm like, yeah. And he wanted to get pulled just so we could have a police escort right. to get us there right. safely. Right. But we didn't even get pulled. So we were rolling and got there and I got, um, they called at 7.55 on August 14th of 2014 
and they wheeled me back into surgery at 3.30 August the 15th morning. Wow, 3.30 in the morning. 3.30 in the morning, yes ma'am. Because you gotta, you gotta get that heart when it's still viable. Right. Yes, absolutely. Um, and so they, uh, I was in surgery, you know, for the whole day pretty much on the 15th. Mm -hmm. um, and I was discharged only in 14 days. Really? Yes, they said I was the second, um, and I was still pediatric at that time because mm -hmm. I hadn't turned 18 yet. Mm -hmm. um, so they said I was the second fastest pediatric patient wow. to be discharged from having a heart transplant. Um, and now I did forget to say that uh, my transplant was actually at Duke uh -huh. for insurance purposes. Mm -hmm. So my heart failure and my LVAD, all that, and up until from 96 to 2013 was at UNC. Mm -hmm. But because of insurance, you know, they told us that for whatever reason, UNC was not in network with my, uh, my dad's insurance. So they said, uh, you know, we, we were prepared to go anywhere. Sure, obviously. of course. You know, my course. parents, you know, we were like, we'll take her anywhere. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, how about Duke? And we're like, a 15 minute difference? Yeah, really, yeah. yeah. No brainer, right? right. So, so we were fine with that. So that worked out perfectly. Um, I just forgot to add that part. But, uh, but yeah, so 14 days, um, I was discharged from Duke and it was actually on my 18th birthday. Oh, wow. So I was able to sign my discharge papers you know, they had like a whole going away, you know, discharge party and mm -hmm, 18 party mm -hmm. um, and everything. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Yeah, of course. So, um, so yeah, then, and I'm, I'm still doing good now. I'm seven and a half years out. Wow. I will make eight and uh, I've taken my medicines. I'm on rejection, anti-rejection meds every 12 hours mm -hmm. for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm just doing whatever I can to keep this new heart healthy and I don't know anything about my donor. I don't know anything about mm. anything. Um, but uh, they did say that because my heart, my own heart was so enlarged that um, my, my new heart could be, you know, just for reference, you know, like the size of a six-year-old kid mm -hmm. all the way up to like a 60-year-old man. Oh, okay. Because of my, my chest cavity had the the space because your your original because, heart was so big. My original heart was mm -hmm. so big, um, but plus since I, you know I'm a little person, you know I could have a little heart, you know a smaller heart right, sure. that still can grow uh -huh. and get bigger, right. or have you know a grown person's right. heart as well. Right. So in that case, you know that's a bigger range. It was easier and to get a heart than you weren't so limited. It was. Uh -huh. I was um, on uh, the list as one B. Um, there's different criteria to, to specify how, you know, how critical you are. Mm -hmm. And even though I was pediatric, which is always top, you know, right. um, they always go to the kids first, you know, before adults. Um, but also because I wasn't actually in the hospital, pediatric patients that were in the hospital oh, they were got, 1A. I gotcha. Where mm -hmm. I was 1B because I was at home. I right. was doing school. Yeah, I was on batteries, but I was... I was right, right. at home. Um, but, you know, saying that to say, it was still only four and a half months or so. Yeah. So that, um, yeah. It's awesome. And Courtney now works at the Dunn Center. So when you go to see one of those productions at the Dunn Center, you can think about Courtney. She's there. I don't know exactly what her job is, but she helps coordinate and get all the tickets go going and get probably as has something to do with the shows as well. Well, Courtney, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. And God has a purpose and a plan for you, girl, doesn't he? I hope so. Uh -huh. yes. All right. Y'all have a blessed day, and I'm glad we could share Courtney's story with you. Bye-bye.